Now is the time, Portal Master. Hey everyone, this is Mike with SkylanderNuts.com. I'm coming to you today with another character review for Riptide. Riptide is a new core water Skylander. The fact that he's core means he's not swappable. You cannot mix him with any other Skylanders. But he's also brand new. He's a Series 1. He's never been in any other game before. This means he's only going to work in Swap Force. You can't use him in Giants and you can't use him in Spyro's Adventure. Uh, currently he can be bought by himself at the moment for about $9.99 at most retailers. Uh, he does not come in a triple pack that I've seen. That's possible. If you wait long enough, he may come in a triple pack later. Uh, it's also possible that you won't be able to find him anymore, and then if you really want him, you'll have to spend big bucks. Uh, all right, let's put him on the portal and take a closer look at Riptide. There he is. There's Riptide. He's a new water core Skylander for Swap Force. As you can see, he's some kind of fish man. Kind of like Gilgrunt, but of a different species, probably. He's got two legs, two arms. Obviously a fish with his blue scales. Yellow underside. Um, he's got this bigger upper body and smaller legs. So he looks pretty muscular. It looks like he's ready, ready to fight. Mean guy, ready to protect Skylands. He also has this mean looking fish. I mean, look at that. A fish is ready for action. That's his swordfish, and coupled that with his big upper body, you can bet he probably has a pretty good melee attack. He also has this nice gold armor with the water crest element symbol on it. He's got scales to go with his fishy scales. Yep, he is definitely ready for action. All right, well, let's get him in the game and check out what a maxed out Riptide can do. Alright, I'm back with Connor to show you Riptide. This is a new core character and he's got some pretty interesting attacks. Uh, he's a fish like Gilgrunt, so at first I wasn't too excited to play with him. But he warmed up on me after a while. We're doing the Hungry Hungry Gobblepods arena battle again. So we can show off some of these attacks. Now his basic attack is got a swordfish for his basic attack. Swinging it, well, it's pretty quick. So many enemies. Now as you can notice when he gets far away from someone and he swings it, he kind of lunges at the enemy. Try to hit somebody far away. Hit a chompy that's coming from a distance. Oh, you're too They're close. They're all behind me. The gavel pot in me. Yeah, okay, go, go hit a gobble pot. There you go. You can kind of see how he lurches toward his enemy. That makes him pretty fast. It's a very fast attack with the swordfish. Now, if Connor uses the B button, he can throw that at somebody. He'll throw the fish from a distance. There he goes. It also switches his fish to a hammerhead shark. Now, when he hits the X button, he'll swing this fish around. It's a much slower but a more powerful attack. But in it even from... Boom, boom. <laughs> now we've upgraded this attack with something called the bigger fish, bigger fish to fly. This just means by throwing the, this stage is just about throwing done. the uh, attack Throwing the sword will have a increased damage. Now, as you can see, Connor is using a special um, attack that we upgraded with the Fishy Fencer Path. Fishy Fencer Path allows you to upgrade the needle nose or the uh, swordfish attacks. Um, the first one increases damage to enemies over time, so when you throw the swordfish at somebody, it'll actually do more damage over time. The spinning attack there is called straight as an angler. If he holds down the X button, he will 
it will charge the attack so when he releases it, it will then lunge after and do some major damage. There you go, got the food thief that time. And then there is another upgrade in the fish defense path, which increases the damage from the swordfish. Now there's another attack using the Y button, which brings out a massive whale. Show them the whale attack. Y button again? It's Y button. There it is, look at that. Massive whale attack. You go back to using your current weapon after that. What current weapon? Current weapon. Oh, so if you're on the hammerhead and you do it, you'll stay with the shark. So every time he throws the fish at somebody, it switches to the other type of fish. So this is how you can switch your attacks from quick attacks like the swordfish to heavy attacks like the hammerhead. Go get the uh, life spell. Home. Now we've upgraded the whale attack with something called the blistering blubber. Uh, that does more damage yes. to your attack using the whale. Alright, show him that whale attack again. Now watch when he does a whale attack. Out of its spout comes a series of piranha fish. That is the soul gem upgrade ability. And those piranha fish, even if the whale doesn't hit you, those piranha fish will. And they just keep attacking until for a short period of time. So that's pretty crazy uh, soul gem ability. Like, totally got rid of that greeble. And the fish go, oh, oh, I thought you had him. That'll do it. Oh, what? Crazy. Okay. Yep, when you can hit somebody with that whale. Now it's slower and it takes some time, but those uh, piranha do some extra damage. I don't know if you're going to get the food deep on it. Nope. Now, the p path we didn't choose is called the Flounder Pounder Path. That upgrades your Hammerhead Shark ability. And the upgrades kind of sound very similar to the uh, swordfish attacks. And if you can throw the hammerhead and it'll bounce off enemies. You can upgrade the power of the hammerhead and then you can hold it to do a charged shark attack, which dashes forward and bites enemies on the way. So, I think with this character, it really doesn't matter which path you choose other than pick the path for the weapon that you like to use the most. If you like to use the hammerhead all the time, then choose that path. If you like to use the swordfish, then choose that one. We like the swordfish. We just like the speed over the power. Uh, the ability to get sucked into your enemy is pretty, pretty powerful, I think. No time to rest. Smash him with that whale. I don't know if he's throwing that fast. He's healing it faster than you can get him. There you go. There's another one down there. There's always two. Yep. Alright, doing a good job. Show him that whale one more time. Oh, it's kind of hard to do against that guy. There we go. Smash. Finish him off. There you go. So there's Riptide. He's pretty fun to play with. I don't gravitate towards him as much as the other Skylanders, but he is pretty powerful. Switching the fish can be annoying in the heat of a battle. Don't really use the hammerhead that much, so he becomes just a, just a sword attack enemy. I don't even use the whale that much. Now you can see the whale's kind of powerful, and in the right situation, pretty useful, but um, just not something 
I tend to use a lot. So Riptide's okay. He's not bad. I think he's better once he's fully, um, fully maxed out than early on. Early on, I didn't really like him that much. Uh, didn't seem to have any great attacks to start. Uh, so that's Riptide. Visit the website for a full review and written review and a score. And we'll catch you next time for another Skylander Swap Force character review. Bye. All right. <laughs> See you next time.